Okay guys, so today I want to address something that is particularly pressing, I think, a lot of times in the minds of athletes, in the minds of new athletes really, but all athletes as well. Um, and that question is, when will my body change? Uh, when will I see the body composition changes that I desire and have the body that I, I want to have? Um, now, that is a, a tough question because um, a lot of people may never have the body that they desire. Um, a lot of how we look, of course, is hard-coded into our DNA, and some of those things are hard to change. Um, on the other side of things, nobody trains purely for performance aspects. Perhaps in a perfect world, everybody would train just to improve their performance, and nobody would really worry what they look like, but uh, that's not the reality of life. And so, we need to address some things that you can do to kind of set yourself up for success and to manage and manage a lot of expectations that you have based on the reality of how our bodies work. Um, first of all, diet. Uh, I sent out the nutrition doc a couple of videos ago. I will link it again in the, the video uh, description below. Um, your diet is the biggest factor for how what your body composition is uh, behind genetics. Genetics is number one, diet is number two, and if we were to have a very simple understanding of what it is, then um, training would be number three. Um, training is gonna affect your the way that your body looks because the, what the activities that you do and the type of intensity that you work at is going to determine how much and what type of adaptations that your body makes. And that's gonna determine how you look. A cyclist looks very different than a bodybuilder. They have very different activities. Their body, they demand very different things. They use different energy systems, so on and so forth. All of these things lead to pretty drastic differences in, in how you look. Um, regardless, you cannot uh, overcome a bad diet simply with training, regardless of what type of training you're doing. Diet plays a bigger factor in the way that your body looks than training does. Training influences the way that your body looks, but diet is going to largely determine what your body composition is. Uh, diet is also the hardest to maintain. Training is fun, eating healthy isn't. Everybody wants to cheat, everybody has days where they don't really care, whatever it may be. Um, sometimes it's just hard too. You may live in an area that doesn't really have great food options, um, whether that be on a military base or um, in a neighborhood that doesn't have food selections that really adhere to uh, what you would need to create the sort of changes in your body composition that you're looking for. Whatever the case may be, it's really hard to maintain. Also, motivation, discipline, these things all wax and wane with different uh, times of our lives. And so it's, it's difficult, the, you have to do your best to set good habits and then kind of forget about everything else. Just set it and forget it. Create those good habits, know what you should be eating and about how much you should be eating and do your best to stick to it. Uh, consistency over the course of time is going to be the most beneficial thing that you can look to do uh, in regards to that. And the longer that your, your diet has been bad, the longer it's gonna take for you to reverse the changes of all of all of that um, all the time that it's been bad and so you have to understand that if you have been eating poorly and living a sedentary lifestyle for years and years and years and you're just now getting into training and starting to change it around um, even at three six months you may be frustrated with the type of progress that you've seen um, but at the same time like you got to stick with it you can't just give up um, you have to realize that it's gonna take time and probably more time than, than what you desire. Another thing that we run into a lot here because we live in Austin and it has a very vibrant nightlife uh, is that we'll have athletes who come in and they train really hard during the week and then they go out and they go hard on the weekend and they drink a lot um, and they wonder, they come to us as coaches and they wonder why they're not seeing the changes that they wanna see. Um, and a lot of times it can be that their alcohol consumption and generally their diet on the weekend is so bad it is sort of revert, it's, it's offsetting all of the positive benefits of training and really doing things normally um, during the week. And so you do have to, 
you may have to cut back a little bit. Now, of course, I'm gonna tell you how to live, do whatever you want, but um, just understand the impacts that that can have if you're really trying to change your body composition. Um, so let's actually talk about that a little bit. Um, let's look at outside activities in, in a, a kind of a weekly timeline. Now there are 168 hours in the week, and let's say that you spend five hours training, which is pretty reasonable. Any more than that, I mean, you're either an endurance athlete who's probably looking to be competitive, um, or you're training too much. Um, so five hours of training is, is pretty reasonable for most people um, every week. Uh, now five hours of training in 168 hours, okay? Let's just look at this proportion really quickly. Just take note of that. Let's say that you sleep eight hours a night, or seven nights a week, every week. That's 56 hours of that week that you're spending sleeping. That's, that's great time. That is a time investment, by the way. Um, 40 hours of working. Honestly, in America, if you're a professional who's paying for training like Atomic Athlete, uh, you're probably working longer than 40 hours, but this is the standard, so let's just use it. That leaves you 67 hours of time on your hands. What are you doing with that time? Now, the reason I point this out, really, the question of what are you doing with that time comes down to, is what you're doing with that time beneficial to the body changes that you want, or is it detrimental? Uh, is that a lot of time that, you're, that you spend sitting down in front of a computer? I, I find myself, a lot of times, uh, working in a computer, sitting down for much longer, and you know, of course, I get tightness in my hips, shoulders, and all those sorts of things. That's a struggle that I deal with, um, but, also, my job is to be up and moving with people, and so I don't probably feel the degree of setback that I would if I had like an office job or something like that, where this 67 hours right here of whatever is, off, is, is compounded upon this as well, where I'm just sitting for a lot of time, uh, a lot more time than I would like to sit, or being inactive for a lot more time than I would like to be inactive. Um, now, I'm also not saying that this 67 hours here needs to be Oh, constant activity. I mean, it needs to be time where you're reading and relaxing and like just hanging out, but also like that time is time where you're cooking, right? Playing with your kids, uh, helping helping your young student, whatever it may be. I mean, their life is full of so many things that can be, that, that can fill this time. But it could also be filled with snacking or, or doing other unhealthy things that might, or drinking or whatever, whatever it may be. Uh, not that that's necessarily unhealthy in and of itself, but if it's always happening and if, it, it may be a block to what you're looking to, what your goals are, right? So it's just, this breakdown is just an assessment of, hey, look how much time we have in the week. Look how little of it is spent like dedicating ourselves to uh, getting our performance dialed in and making our bodies better. And look at how much opportunity that we have outside of that, which could negatively influence those positive changes that we're, we're looking to gain. Um, finally, I want to uh, address the, our takeaways, and I want to address also that our mind and our body kind of have two different timelines. Our mind's timeline for how we want to look is completely independent of what our body, our body needs to make the changes that, that we desire. Um, now, you should, uh, in a, as we get into our takeaways, you should be patient and trust the process, trust your body, your body knows what it needs to do, all right? It is your job to give it the raw materials that it needs and, and the fuel that it needs to perform and to transform. And if you're not doing that, then it's, it's gonna be an even longer timeline for your body to make the changes that you desire. And that dissonance is going to create a problem uh, with your mind, right? Because your mind's like, hey, I wanna change now. And your body's like, well, I'm doing the best I can, but I need the, the raw materials and the fuel, you know, in order to deliver the changes that, that you wanna see. Um, so understand that no matter what, like you've got to be patient with your body. It's a really, like you cannot think about it in days or weeks or months. You really need to think about uh, body transformation on the, on the timeline of years, all right? If you stick with one training modality for three years, your body is going to really adapt into that uh, and really change into that thing. Now, after six months, eight months, nine months, you're gonna start to see changes, but the changes that you start to see are just scratching the surface of what you will realize over the course of time. There is an adage that people always 
overestimate what they can accomplish in six months, but vastly underestimate what they can accomplish in five years, all right? I would encourage you to look at the timeline of body composition and body transformation on the, in terms of years rather than months. Um, third, value your time, okay? Try to find activities and pastimes that are going to uh, help you to see the changes that you wanna see. Make training your target. Every day that you train, training should be your target, and uh, ideally, and you would prioritize your time and sort of your schedule around training. That's really gonna help you structure your nutrition around your training schedule. And structuring your nutrition around your training schedule is gonna help you optimize your training. The better quality of training you get, the better quality of adaptations that you're gonna make, certainly sooner as well. And it's gonna help you stay on track with what you need to do to fuel your body uh, properly to train, uh, train um, the way that you want to train. Now this can be tough because of course a lot of you guys are working office jobs and that's usually your priority for the day. Of course, like you have to work, you have to pay the bills, all that, all that sort of thing. That is 100% understood. But whenever you do get off of work, if your training is your target, you probably have eaten a better lunch, a healthier breakfast, and you're actually moving to the gym rather than just being like, well, hey, you know what, I'm a little tired today or it was a stressful day, I'm just gonna go home and relax. Uh, that's an appropriate thing to do if it's needed, but if that's something that you're always defaulting to, then it's a bad habit. And so, uh, train. that would also be an indicator that training isn't really your target here. So keep training your target on those days that you're training so that you can stick to it, eat properly, hydrate properly, all that kind of stuff. Which of course brings us to our last takeaway. If you want to really change your body, eat vegetables, drink water, and sleep well, and sleep enough. Your body needs seven to, eight, seven to nine hours of sleep, all right? That's, that's, the, that's what the science says, all right? The science is in on that sort of thing, all right? The science is in on vegetables. No matter what kind of diet you prescribe to, uh, personally, vegetables should be part of it. Um, no matter what sort of diet you prescribe to, you should sleep well and get enough sleep. And of course, water is the absolute number one essential thing that your body needs to live and to function. And so you need to drink plenty of water. Half of your body weight in water every day plus 20 ounces for every hour that you train. That's the standard for water. You should be hitting that every single day, but it's really tough. I'm failing at it right now. I haven't had enough water today, but um, regardless, like you've got to keep trying. You gotta keep doing those sorts of things. Um, these five takeaways combined with some of the, some of the things we've talked about over here, are gonna set you on a path to seeing the body composition changes that you wanna see, but regardless, you still gotta be patient. Thanks guys.